hello guys and welcome back so today we are going to build a fun little project which allows you to run the python in the browser um, and we are going to be using WebAssembly. Um, WebAssembly, for you guys who don't know, is an instruction format. It's sort of, in simple word, it's, it's an instruction format that allows you to run other languages in the browser other than JavaScript. So that means essentially you can write your front end web applications in almost any other language that support WebAssembly target. And then you can run that application in the browser, which is pretty cool. And the performance, it's near native. So yeah, it's yeah, I'm it it is interesting to me, and I hope it sounds interesting to you as well. And today we are going to build this simple application that allows you to enter some Python code and then run it natively in the browser. So here I have a, a weed project. It is a simple weed project. I just ran npm um, create weed at latest and then give it the name of my project and then it created this boilerplate for me it's nothing just html css files um this is this is the main uh, html file um and then we have our main.js file attached um we are not going to be using the plain css we'll be using tailwind just to style things a little bit not too much um the main thing is we'll be using uh, pyodide which is the port of C Python to WebAssembly. So that allows us to run Python natively in the browser without sending the code to some sort of backend and then get the response. So first I'm just going to remove all of this. We don't need any of that. And then inside the, yeah, okay. So that's pretty much it. We can remove that as well. And then have a div here, that's the, that simple now just run it pnpm run dev and then that should open let me open that in the browser and then we have our hello world app here let's make it side by side a little smaller Okay, so like I said, we are going to be using some external libraries and one of them is Pyodite. Pyodite uh, is just, let me search it. So Pyodite is a um, port of CPython to WebAssembly. So it's basically the WebAssembly instructions to run Python in the browser. And it's a pretty cool project. It supports pretty much all of the native Python modules, standard libraries, most of it. Not all, but most of it. And the, it's still work in progress. So yeah, that's what we're going to be using. And then uh, let's include it via the script tag. So let me copy the script tag and we can just paste it here. Here is the script tag. And then while we are here, let's include other script tags like Tailwind. So we are going to be using Tailwind for styling. So while we are here, let's just include Tailwind. Um, I won't go into details of styling because that is not the point of this video. But yeah, just for the reference, I'm, I'll be just writing some CSS classes, um, Tailwind CSS classes, particularly to style things up a little bit, not much. Um, now that we have everything set up, let's just write our body. And let's move it to here and then add the differ attribute here. Differ. So first of all, let's have an h2 tag. Um, this is just uh, uh, the main heading. Um, let me just copy and paste some CSS classes for the tailwind. Uh, the body is just give it some um, default gray background and then the text for all of the body will be white. And then we have our and here class is equals to text center. Okay. So this is this is just a simple structure of or uh, the layout of the application. And then um we can just add a div for the whole application. So let's add a div. This is going to be a text area, and then this can be this can be separate div. Uh, we can just inject uh, the text in that div. So that div 
and then inside that div we want to have text area uh, okay so the long tail when classes but this is something that we really want to target it so python source is just this text area where we want to write the python code and then um, let's add a div to show the output log so basically this part so this is the text area and then this is our div and then that div will have an id of output log this is our div that's it so here you go um there you have uh, let me add some sort of padding here so pass uh, container and then full width max auto so so some tailwind classes just to make things a little bit prettier um, so now it won't get to the whole screen um that's it and let's add our two buttons so for that just let's just have another div right here and then we have two buttons i'm going to be copying and pasting some css classes again just to make the buttons red and blue respectively and then we are going to be giving the id to each button here we have a button let's style this table a little bit so flags nice flags items and oh uh, we want to wrap it inside yeah that's better so justify Right. and then mx auto okay so we have all of our divs and text areas targeted and saved in a separate variable now we can have an asynchronous main function and then when this loads it just uh, call this main function now we can go ahead and then load pyodite so this pyodite being included is the javascript uh, uh, bindings or job sort of javascript that is required to load the main web assembly um, so now we need to call the appropriate functions to load all of the web assembly and then you want to give it a url which in my case is this version so this is the version that i'm going to be using uh, 0.23.3 and then uh, there are some uh, callback functions that we want to pass so this is when the when the code is executed this function will be called with the output of the function so this has to, is essentially the output of our code so whatever we write i will be sent back here in this s variable so we can just create a paragraph document dot create element paragraph and then we can just set the inner html of that paragraph to this string s let's just format that a little bit so just to make it look good okay so like that now we just want to append it as a child of this output text area so essentially it will show up like here it will stack up here in this box and then if something goes wrong we want to pass in std error so if your code has some syntax error or anything like that it will call this pyodide will call this function with your error and we want to do pretty much same with the error we want we will create a paragraph set our HTML, and then append it to our output area now let's add event listener to these buttons so we can run uh, our code when the button is clicked and things like that so let me add run run bdn and then dot add event listener 
let's make it functional. Okay, so async, and then what we want is get the code, which is text value, and then by that route run async. Um, we can run it asynchronously or we can just run it synchronously uh, with run python and just pass it the code so whatever we write in the in this text book will be passed to the pyrite and then the output of this code will be sent to this function and then this function will just append that to our output area that simple and then let's just add the clear button as well when clicked will clear the inner html of the output area like that so now we should have our functionality pretty much all of the base functionality okay we can type our python our while and then let's run it okay so something is not working let's see what the problem is Okay, so we have hello world as the console. So here's the problem. The problem is it should be a study out. Now, if I write, let's hit run. Okay, so you get hello world. And not just that, you can work with most of the standard library stuff. So um, you can, let's say, import random here. And then write a for loop. Let's print ten random numbers. Random dot range, and then I think we need to pass sort of a range to this random number. Otherwise, it generates a number from between zero and one. Let's let's pass. Let's try passing this range. Right, okay, so yeah, let's clear it and rerun it. So here are over 10 marks, so 6, 10, 5, 7. So yeah, it's working. So yeah, this is, this is running natively in the browser, so no network request, no nothing. It's just running in the browser the same way you run your uh, JavaScript in the console. This Python code is running exactly the same way this code is running, but it's running with WebAssembly. Okay, so I hope you like it, this, this little project, and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.